Hi DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to add in a wireless zone to your Quoltus IQ Panel 2 or your Quoltus IQ Panel 2 Plus. Um, so uh, for today's video, the Quoltus IQ Panel 2 can learn in 128 different wireless zones. Doors, motions, glass breaks, flood detectors, CO detectors, smoke detectors, heat detectors, uh, any kind of security sensor that you think you may have for the IQ2 Plus, as long as uh, it is a wireless sensor, it will be added and the system can hold up to 128 of them. All right. Um, now, right today, I'm actually using a normal IQ2, which means that it has only the 319.5 the, uh, megahertz receiver. For those of you out there that have an IQ2 Plus, that means you might be using PowerG sensors. And then depending on the flavor that you got, you might have the 319.5 uh, legacy daughterboard card. You might have the Honeywell slash 2 gig daughterboard card, which is the 345 megahertz. Or you might have the DSC legacy daughterboard card, which is 433 megahertz. Now all of the IQ2 Plus is half power G, so it's power G plus one of the ones I just mentioned. So depending on what sensors you're learning in, you want to make sure you have the correct sensor and the correct panel. Now today I'm actually learning in this S-Line door window sensor and this transmits at a 319.5 megahertz which is actually compatible with my system. All right so to start off you are going to need your installer code or your dealer code for the security system. The installer code and dealer code if you buy the system brand new the default installer code is 1111 and the default dealer code is 2222. So if your panel is defaulted and brand new, you can use any of these codes to get into the installer menu so you can actually program in these sensors. I'm going to show you guys what the two menus look like right now and I'm going to show you guys what the master menu looks like. A lot of people think they have their installer or dealer code, but it's really just a code that they arm and disarm with, which is completely different. Yeah, so there's a big difference between a master code, an installer code, and a dealer code. So the first thing we need to do is on, on your IQ2 Plus, if you're first time setting it up, you're going to hit the little bar up at the very top. It's going to open up your menu. You're going to go to settings. Now, when we go to advanced settings, this is where you're going to need to enter in your installer code or your dealer code. My installer code menu is going to look like this. After I enter in 1111, you're going to see these, these menu options right here. Now, when I enter into my dealer code, I'm just going to hit the back arrow key, advanced enter settings, in enter in my dealer code. I should get the I should still get the same settings, but with a little more, such as uh, there's a um, dealer branding. There's a couple of other different options that you have under the dealer one, but the main one that we need to look at is installation. Now, what happens if you don't enter in the correct code? Let's say you enter in your master code, which for mine again, my panel's defaulted, so it's one, two, three, four. You're not going to see installation. Installation is actually what we need to install these sensors. So if you enter in a code and you get this screen right here where it says master settings, you have not entered in the correct code. So we need to hit the back arrow key, go to advanced settings, and again, installer code or dealer code. I'm going to do installer code, 1111. I'm going to go to installation. I'm going to go to devices, and we're installing security sensors. So I'm going to hit security sensors. Now, the easiest way to do this is by auto learning the sensor in. It's very easy to do. Once you hit auto learn sensor, the system is gonna go into a listening mode. What the system does is this, now it's gonna start listening for any wireless frequencies that are tripped. Most of these batteries come with like a little uh, plastic tab that you pull out to finally make the, con the battery come into contact with the, um, with the actual power source to power the sensor on. So most of these is just a simple battery tab pool, but I already have an existing sensor, so I'm actually going to trip it. So I'm going to put the magnet next to the reed switch and I'm going to set it off. Once I do that, this will send a wireless transmission and this panel will receive the transmission and it will read the serial number that's on the back of the system. That's that serial number that's attached to this sensor and you can actually match them up. I'll show you that in one second. So I'm going to go to auto learn sensor. Now from here, I'm going to put the magnet next to my sensor. If you guys are powering it on, you guys just simply pull the battery tab. Um, or if the battery tab pool doesn't work, if it still doesn't learn in, just put the magnet next to the sensor, open it up. 
the sen the the sen the signal is sent, the transmission is sent from the sensor, and then it's been learned in or it's been picked up by the alarm system. Now, if you look at the system here, the sensor that it picked up was Charlie six seven nine Alpha eight. If you look at the back of my sensor, which we're actually going to get a close up. The serial number, or I'm sorry, not the serial number, the DL number is the one that we're going to want to look at, should also match what you see on the closest screen. So if you look at the closest screen, it says Charlie 679 Alpha 8. The DL number on the back of my sensor also says Charlie 679 Alpha 8. After you confirm that they're matching, you can hit OK. Now, before we get into this menu, the reason why we want to confirm is let's say you have sensors that are already set up in the field um some of you guys walk around the the house you put the panel into a listening mode you walk around and you go to open up a door but what if you walk past a motion when you open up that door the motion picks up on your signal it sends out a wireless transmission you think that that sensor number is actually the front door sensor but it's actually the motion that you tripped on your way to the front door so you want to make sure that you guys are always paying attention to the serial numbers and you're matching them accordingly to the sensor you want to learn in all right um so just make sure you're paying close attention to that right so again here top left starting from the left going to the right we'll have the dl id number which again that matches what's on the back of our sensor charlie 679 alpha 8 the sensor type is going to be door window. Yeah, um, you're pretty much always going to leave it the same. When you learn in a motion, it'll come in as a motion. If you learn in a glass break, it'll come in as a glass break. A um, couple of different options. They pretty much automatically go to their own sensor type. The one thing that you probably will need to change is going to be the sensor group. Now, when you're looking at the sensor group, you're going to want to make sure you're looking at all the... Um, all of the options here and if you look at the installation guide or the programming guide for the iq2 plus on one of the pages you actually have all your sensor groups and what they actually do um, our faq actually has a direct link to the actual guide and it tells you what page to go to so you want to make sure that you're looking at that page so that you choose the correct one right now since i'm technically going to be using this for my front door i'm going to leave it as an entry exit normal delay now, if I'm putting this on a window, I don't want there to be a delay. I might set it as a instant perimeter door slash window. Instant perimeter means that as soon as the door window is open, no matter whether the system is armed stay or away or in the middle of arming, if that door window is open, there is no delay. It automatically sets the alarm off right away, which is normally what you want for windows. You don't want there to be a delay for the windows. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead, since this is going to be my front door sensor, I'll leave it as entry exit. Now the sensor name, this is where you're going to actually type in uh, the, the description of your sensor, where it's going to be located. Uh, this one is front door. It gives you a couple of options if you scroll through it. However, if you want to make a custom description, like let's say you want to put, um, I'll put video sensor. You could actually make a custom description and the the chip that's in this iq2 plus it can actually read out all of your custom descriptions so it's not like most alarm systems out there like i know um some of the honeywell ones they have predefined vocabulary or dictionaries where if you don't use a word that's in the dictionary it won't actually enunciate or vocal enunciate the sensor this one actually does which whatever with whatever you type in so i'll type in video sensor the chime you can add it a different chime on here, whatever you want. I could put Tinkerbell, right? Voice prompts. This is if you want the sensor to actually voice enunciate. So I'm going to set it to on. It was already set to on. Um, and it, that way I can actually hear video sensor. And then the source. This is something that you also do not have to touch. Remember I said this was an S-line sensor, so it actually learned it in as an S-line. Um, and since this is a normal IQ2, you also see the, th the security 319. Um, it's 319.5, but it just does 319 for short. Um, now, if you guys are using different sensors, Honeywell 345, DSC 433, or PowerG, that's going to show up in your source as well. You don't have to change it. If you automatically enroll them, the source will automatically be set. After you've configured everything for your sensor, 
You have to hit add new in order for the sensor to be saved. Sensor added successfully. It'll say sensor added successfully and then once you're done learning your door window sensor, um, you can go ahead and back out. Press the home button, right? So once you press the home button, it backs you out to the main screen. Now, this is just for a door window sensor, right? Um, every sensor has its own unique way of being enrolled in. Some motion sensors, upon powering up, they go into a test mode. Um, so obviously, if you have the auto learn, uh, if you have your system in auto learn, you just, it's, it's, since it's in walk test mode, if you trip it, it'll send this transmission. Um, smoke detectors have an enrollment button. Some glass break detectors, as you can see, I just tripped the sensor and it actually says video sensor open. I'll let you guys hear it one more time. And it also shows you, I'm going to go to all, but it shows you what sensors are there. Right now it says the video sensor is closed, right? But if I open it, open. it'll say video sensor open and it'll show an open circuit or an open link. Yeah. And then when I close it, it closes the sensor. So I'm going to leave that here. So, like I said, every sensor is going to have its different way of enrollment. You want to make sure that, one, you're either looking at the guide for the sensor, at the installation guide for the sensor. Two, if you have any questions about installing them, and if you're monitored with Alarm Grid or monitored with another company, uh, ask your company, hey, this sensor isn't learning in. Sometimes the sensor may need to be uh, reset. Sometimes the sensor may just need a simple power on, power off, so removing the battery and putting the battery back on. Sometimes the enrollment is completely different. Sometimes you have to hold the button down for three seconds, wait till the light blinks. Every sensor is completely different, so you want to make sure that you're looking at the manuals and that you're asking your company questions if you have any. If you guys want to get your IQ2 or your IQ2 Plus monitored with Alarm Grid, please feel free to send us an email to support at alarmgrid.com. We'd love to bring you on into the Alarm Grid family. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and hit the little bell icon so whenever we upload new content, you guys get notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.